really great to be here. Let's go, Ray. Great Wall of China, 4,200 Ks as mentioned. It had never been done before, hasn't been repeated because it's some of the harshest terrain on the planet. Tim Noakes, who has very generously written the foreword for my book, has said it's physically impossible, can't be done. Chances of something happening to us that would prevent us, uh, us from completing the journey would actually just compromise the whole event. I love saying this. I hope Tim's not here today. He was wrong. Um, the harshness of the terrain, Gobi Desert, we ran tower to tower. Most of us have this vision of the Great Wall, not quite that way. It, essentially, we would be running tower to tower, GPS point, Garmin, always mention your sponsors, Garmin GPS to the next point. We were told no sandstorms. We got into this hectic dust storm, and that was the first time on the journey out of three that I nearly lost my life. You gag, you vomit, you induce vomiting, and when I came out of that little exercise, two things remained with me which I utilize every day of my life, humility and gratitude, every day. The lowest plateau, the most eroded area on the planet, from an environmental perspective, bad farming practices. What happens when you peel the skin off the planet? We don't grow crops and so on, but it was, we called it Dongaland, being South African. You go down, look for a way out, sometimes you've got to go back. Many dead ends, which is not cool, it's, it's debilitating mentally. But of course, you know, you think about it, why did I want to go and run the Great Wall of China? When David posed the, the idea, and he at that point was opposed to having a charity for his own good reasons, which I, I totally respected, he wanted to remain focused on the task at hand. I wanted a cause beyond myself, because your ego goes out of the window. The training, the training was on this horrible machine, the Grucox device, um, developed by my knee surgeon, Willem van der Merwe, who incidentally, after China, did a knee operation, and he told me I would never run again. And then after that, we did the coastline of South Africa. Um, not that quickly, but we did it. The mental stress, the physical component of, of training, we had to work to run 45 kilometers a day before going to China. The mental stress was the biggest part for me, and if it wasn't for this cause that I refer to, I don't believe, I can say emphatically, actually, I wouldn't have made it. You know, I'd lost all my toenails in the first three weeks. Um, the blisters, the most difficult part of the entire day, was putting my shoes on. It would take about half an hour, hence the barefoot. Adidas are my shoe sponsor, by the way. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, Max said, go for it, you know, go for it, take your shoes off, so... There we go. And unlike some of you people in the front row, my feet do not stink. <laughs> um, that's the cause. Operation Smile. They do corrective facial surgery on children born predominantly with cleft, cleft lip and palate disfigurements, some burn victims and so on. But I knew that ego was going to go right to the back of the moon when you're in the Gobi. That's before and that's after exactly six months, by the way, the, the, before the operation. That's little Michelle from Craddock, wonderful little girl, who's a lesson to all of us, by the way. She has decided to become a doctor so she can fix people the way we fixed her. And that's super powerful. And that's from, yeah, the R was good. And then, of course, the milestones. Don't clap yet, I've got 20 seconds of slide, guys. Okay. The milestones, just over halfway, long way to go. But the respect that David and I had for the planet, for, for nature that was getting us through it, and also something that I got very personally out of it was having so much time to be able to be with myself, especially in the high mountains. Our accumulative ascents measured on Garmin, again, not GPS, Garmin, 14.8 um, times the height of Everest in back-to-back -back ascents. And you can think of these people building this thing. So, you know, for me, I, I don't have a job. If, if any of you in the audience have a job, go in on Monday and resign. Really, really. <laughs> Job stands for just over broke, okay? <laughs> for me, it's about having a passion, an energy, a passion, and a cause. Um, the slow going, the abseiling and so on, just to give you a, an idea of temperatures in the high mountains, we're looking at minus 22 degrees. The reason it had never been done before is you cannot run in the Gobi Desert in summer, and you also equally can't run when the Siberian winter comes down from the north in the winter months at minus 35. So you had that window period. I didn't want to run a marathon a day, for heaven's sake. I mean, my surname is Mal Herben, he drinks up in Mal, but, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it was, it was um, for me, I've done four long runs in my life. Every one of them was for a purpose beyond myself. 
Because as I mentioned, when you're in physical pain, the ego goes out of the window. And then it's easy to sprain your ankle and go home with dignity. Those kids got me through, because kids still have big dreams. My son Benjamin, on his 21st, he said to me, you know, parents and adults, they don't, they don't dream anymore. They just have nightmares. <laughs> and there's a degree of truth in that. We spend so much time worrying. And many of us, and I'm hoping I'm excusing everyone here, lead a non-purposeful life. Getting towards the end, I, being a Cape here, it was fantastic because I could smell the ocean three days before we got there. And it was that goosebump feeling that we were home, that we'd arrived. And it was amazing because a, a journey, there's an emptiness at the end. You know, you arrive at the end like this, the wall, the dragon, the sleeping dragon as it's known. We all have sleeping dragons inside of us. That's in my book. Great breed, by the way. I'm selling them afterwards. Okay. <laughs> you said I could mark it. That's little Chanel before operation. Now, just to stress a point here, they look ugly outside, but they also feel ugly inside because they speak funny, they speak like this, so the other kids laugh at them, so they don't go to school, they don't get an education. Their self-esteem is zero. And Operation Smiles, that's her, after her op. Operation Smiles payoff line, which is beautiful. Changing lives one smile at a time. And everyone in this audience can do that. We can all change lives one smile at a time. What I've decided to do with my life is find a cause beyond myself to drive me. There's a, a wonderful definition of hell. Hell is arriving at the end of your life and meeting the person you could have been. So whilst those children get to smile, I say this with all seriousness, there's very little for them to smile about 40 years from now unless we, as adults, fix the mess we've made of this planet in the name of consumption and greed. So for me, it's a purpose-driven life, a passionate and purpose-driven life. I'd like to conclude by just asking you that question. I'm very involved. My second book is, is Rhino Wars. And it's all about taking the fight, not just to the poachers, because the poachers are all the way to the triads in China, where I'll be in August. So for me, it's to leave you with that. What is your purpose? Thanks very much.